Replacing your brake pads is one of the easiest jobs to perform on your car. In general, you should inspect your brake pads about every 10,000 miles and replace them if the material lining of the pad is worn down enough to trigger the pad replacement sensor or down to the wear bar indicator on the pad itself. In reality, most people don't inspect their pads very often and usually wait until they see the little brake pad warning light appear on the dashboard. It's a wise idea to replace the pads and inspect your discs as soon as you see that warning lamp go on. The brake pads are held in the calipers by two metal pins as indicated by the green arrows. Unplug the brake wear sensor connection by pulling it straight out of the harness as shown here. Use a drift as shown here to hammer out the two brake pad retaining pins out of the caliper. As always, you should always be wearing eye protection whenever you work on your vehicle. Here, the pad retaining springs are underneath a bit of tension and can come flying out once you remove the pins. Shown here is the pad retaining spring, green arrow. Make sure you don't lose this unless a new one came with your set of pads. Now pull the brake pads out of the caliper as shown here. Once the brake pads have been removed from the caliper, you'll want to use a wooden handle or some other means to push the brake piston, green arrow, back into the bore of the caliper. This will allow you to slide the new pads back into the caliper. While you are doing this, you will be pushing brake fluid back up into the system, so continuously check the master cylinder reservoir so that it does not overflow. If you are changing the disc, loosen and remove the 5mm hex bolt that secures the brake wear sensor fixture to the caliper, green arrow. You'll need to remove this in order to unbolt the caliper from the hub. You'll need to take the tension off the inner brake shoe in order to remove the rear brake disc. To access the adjusting screw, you'll need to rotate the disc until one of the holes for the lug bolts is at roughly 10 o'clock position, as indicated by the green arrow. If you shine a light inside, you should be able to see it. Also remove the 5mm brake disc retaining screw holding the disc to the hub. This picture shows the adjuster screw with the brake disc removed. You'll need to turn the adjuster screw with a screwdriver in the direction of the green arrow in order to lessen the tension on the two parking brake shoes. Once the tension has been relieved, you can pull the brake disc off. This sometimes confuses people as they can't figure out why the rotor won't come off after removing the retaining screw. Place the new brake disc over the hub and secure it using new brake disc retaining screw as indicated by the green arrow. It also helps to place a dab of anti-seize compound on the threads of the screw. Refit the caliper to the wheel hub and torque the 19 mm bolts to 85 foot-pounds. Rotate the disc so you can access the adjuster screw inside with a small screwdriver and rotate the screw up to increase the tension on the shoes. From time to time, pull the screwdriver out and check and see if you can still turn the disc. You'll want to keep increasing the tension until you can't turn it anymore. Now back the adjuster off until you can just turn the disc. Reinstall the caliper and slide the new brake pads into the slot between the caliper and the new brake disc. Press the new brake wear sensor into the slot on the brake pad as shown here. Take care to line up the sensor correctly, as it can be kind of difficult to center it and get it to seat correctly. Refit the brake pad retaining pins and hook the spring underneath. Once you line up all the holes, drive the pins into the caliper using a drift and hammer. Now refit the 5mm hex bolt holding the brake wear sensor fixture to the back of the caliper and connect the new sensor to the fixture. Now refit the wheel and torque the lug bolts to 85 foot-pounds. Don't forget to pump the brakes a few times to move the piston in the caliper back out into proper contact with the pads and disc. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.